Good morning. Look at this crowd. Yeah, this is awesome. I feel energy busting through my camera. So congratulations, you guys, for investing in yourselves and being here today. Um, we've got a killer, killer, killer day. I mean, so let me just kind of set a couple things for today. When, when I'm sharing Ignite and I'm sharing this content and all this stuff, and I'm going through the material to make sure, like I'm hitting the bullet points that that will that I feel will best help you understand how I went through this material and how I implemented it. And hopefully the way I got through it um, will help some of you actually implement and do and put into action a lot of this stuff. So when, you, when I see the topic today and I just sent out an email, so hopefully that helped blast and remind everybody, man, if you're not on a listing of waiver right now, jump on. Hearing this information just moves you along in your business world. And I know I beat this to a dead horse, but uh, I don't know if I even said that right, but hang with me, guys. Um, repetition, repetition, repetition. The more you hear the same thing, it will start showing up in your life. So I kind of look at myself like probably one of the most average Joe, simple people on the planet. And yet when I say that, I know that where I am in my business and how I implement is in the top, you know, 1% of people that actually get to implement things and put things into action. So I just break it down to the simple, which allows me to be able to share with you guys and hopefully inspire you. Unfortunately, I can't motivate <laughs> you, right? The very first class we had, I wanted you to figure out what's your motivation to jump out of bed um, and go do real estate every day. I don't what's know how that works. I don't know if she has a different one, price for everyone. Line, I, I don't know how it works. I don't know if there's a set price for both. And, oh, we got it. So what's that motivation that's going to make you jump out of bed and do real estate? What's going to be the motivation to jump out of bed and do four hours of lead generation, Ugh, right? And we've been talking about that. But what would that motivation be to make you jump out of bed at 6 a.m. and work out and 7 a.m. get your list together? And by 8 or 9 a.m., you're actually on the phone for four hours. When you figure that out, life's going to get easier. It's not that you're going to have to do four hours of calling strangers and things like that. So kind of pulling back, when I look at this topic about, you know, our value proposition, it's like, yeah, 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 I've been through value proposition. I've been through it. I've done this. I've done that business planning clinic. You know, there's a lot of business plans. People are starting to think about their business plan for October to start planning for next year. And a lot of people sometimes just throw some random numbers in there. They don't keep it in front of them. So today's call, like just going through the material, I, I am super excited and I have so many personal things to share where that value proposition going through the process that we're going through today, which I got to jump on right away because we have a lot of information here, but that value proposition is really truly what pushed me to do a hundred sales a year. So when I sent the email out, I'm not just joking around or trying to get you fluffy and excited and give you fluffy stuff and get you all excited for no reason at all. It truly, this today could be the difference between actually moving towards 100 sales a year out of whatever your business is, or even if you do 100 sales or more a year to take you to an additional 100 sales a year that you may have missed, right? So here's one thing I'm going to ask. Everybody pay attention right now. I got a favor for you. And sometimes people ask, well, what can I do for you? You know, you're sharing some great information. What can I do for you? So I'm going to have a call with Al Donahue. He is your operating partner. He is the reason your offices are in existence. He is the one that took the risk and built the business model to actually have this space available for you to be in real estate, to have this space available for you to learn this Ignite stuff, to have this space available to create unlimited opportunities for you, your family, create the businesses worth owning, lives worth living, and so on, right? So Al is the guy that I, if you really, really, like if something in this material really, really hits home with you, um, Mary Beth and Al are the two that I would love to see you guys send a message to and just say, you know, I was just on a gratitude call earlier today and they put me on stage in the Clubhouse app. I won't get into details on that, but it's called Clubhouse and it was a gratitude room. 
and they pulled me up on stage. So having gratitude today, I, that's what I'm saying is give gratitude to Al and Mary Beth because they are the reason that this is happening. They are the reason that I'm the one that's getting to share this information with you. And I do hope that this is just another way to hear the material that's not just reading the material. I mean, I'm bringing you real world Brad Corn, 20 plus consecutive years of selling 100 homes a year. And honestly, with the systems and stuff, it didn't matter whether I have one person on my team or 10 people on my team. If you've got a team of people, you got one or two or three or 10 people on your team, every single person on your team can sell 100 properties a year. Think about that for a second. If you're a rainmaker and you have two buyer's agents and you all three sell 100 properties a year, that's 300 properties a year coming through your business. This is awesome stuff. So today, what I would like you to do is just, if you don't know how to get it, get a hold of Al, he's probably in a roster or something somewhere, but send me. You can send cornteamkc at gmail.com is my email, cornteamkc at gmail.com. And it's corn with a K, team like a baseball team. KC is in Kansas City at gmail.com. You can send me something just telling me what you like about the class or, you know, your gratitude for whatever you've picked up from it so far. And I'll be sure to share that with Al because we're meeting with the top leadership group on Thursday. They invited me to come and just share this Ignite opportunity and, and what we're doing with Ignite. So I kind of need to know what you're getting out of it. <laughs> It doesn't matter what I think you're getting out of it. There's something about the implementation side of this and the repetition side of this that I hope that when you guys go through it, you get excited about it. So we're going to jump right into the material today. Um, so if you could do that, I would appreciate that. That would be a way to thank me for what you've gotten out of the sessions so far. Okay, and then like today, what we're doing is we're modeling what successful agents have done. That's what Ignite is all about. It's about modeling what successful agents have done. And if you're watching on the screen, this is just a graphic pulled right out of the MREA book. And I want to explain this in a way that I captured it when Gary explained it, because I hear Gary talk about it all the time and explain it all the time. However, I also know coaching top real estate agents, the top Keller William teams in the company that we don't always like do this right so what gary talks about when we're when we're going through ignite and we're talking about modeling top agents some of us are successful already your natural ability is going to carry you so far there are core models like in a stable business there's a core foundation that will carry you through everything another clubhouse room i was in today we were talking about are you ready for the next shift uh, what is the next shift coming, right? And somebody had mentioned that they literally, everybody's predicting 2029 could be the next Great Depression. And that's when it's coming. So now we have insight to that. We just went through a crash in 2005, if you were in real estate, and you went through the 2005 or 2008, which is what you might think through 2015. If you made it through that crash, we right now have an eight-year jump start on what that looks like. So the next eight years, if that's going to happen, and if it doesn't happen, who really cares, right? But this is the opportunity to get that base model so strong. And, and the layer that I'm bringing to this Ignite is selling 100 properties a year. They're all right there in front of you, every single one of you on this call. I mean, if, if you can't look like if you're looking at the window, do the Brady Bunch and look at the person next to you. Right. And and tell them, just say you're going to do 100 sales this year. I, every one of you have 100 sales sitting in front of you right now. And it's just a matter of trying to break out of the mold that the industry has put us in to go look for the next deal, look for the next deal, talking to strangers, talking to for sale by owners, talking to expires, knocking on doors, doing open houses. Not that you don't do those things, right? But we're talking about bringing it into the inner circle and taking your Mets and getting a 12 to 2 return versus focusing out here where you may be now where you've only got a 50 to 1 return. And the same amount of people out here 
brought to a met level, like where you really truly have a two-way conversation, just bring all those people into here and you're going to get eight times, six to eight times more business. So that is perfect level two, because sometimes people will say six times more business. You could be selling 600 homes a year. Yeah, I sell 100 homes a year at one sixth of what I could get. And it's easy. I talked about my 20 lane highway and I'm only using about five lanes of that 20 lane highway. So traffic's just flowing. It's easy. Life is fun. I'm enjoying life. Right. And then another conversation we had in Clubhouse today was getting out of our getting out of our comfort zone. And it's not even getting out of your comfort zone. It's staying out of your comfort zone. So, guys, the models, what we're talking about through Ignite is as you really, truly read the manual, read the book, come to class, read the book, review your notes, watch the video again. There's there's like five times five exposures to the material, four or five exposures to the material again, right? So you can, you can put these models into action per the Ignite book, per the top agents in the real estate in our company that are successful, that they studied to come up with the material. So I hope that gives you kind of a different, little different perspective on how important Ignite is, right? Let me pause out here and ask if, because there's some people that may be new on the call or missed a couple calls, is there anybody that has any questions about anything that I've covered? Like I threw a lot of stuff at you. I wanna make sure that you know, you're know you getting it and you can ask questions. And this is a very, even though I've talked a lot and share a lot of information, I want it to be participatory, right? Anybody have anything they need to ask? I do. Yes, go ahead. So, um, you know, we've talked about, you know, adding, feeding our database, feeding our database, feeding our database, and I have a huge database, although it's not very clean. What would you recommend? Awesome. And was that Ariane? Mm -hmm. All right. And did I say the name right? It's Ariane, kind of like Marianne. Dang, I knew I was going to goof up. That's okay. My mom gets it wrong. Yep, and I did that to myself now. I I do that to myself all the time. It's like I psych myself out and then I do it wrong. Okay, Ariane. So here's the thing. Your database is a mess. And one of the things that we've talked about on just lead generation, we've had it in a couple of the other classes. So it's definitely worth slicing out some time to go back and watch the past sessions again. I think it was either the first or the second session, we talked about going through your database from A to Z. And I mean, we've got the the bold, um, does anybody know what that acronym is? Like I can never remember it. The The DTD2. Yes. So here's here's what Brad Korn goes through, went through in my database. And this was before Steve ever came up with that, right? And it's to get you to mix things up because in our brain, if you do what Brad Korn does, you think everybody's talking to each other and the next A, if you went from A to Z in your database, somehow we think the first A is gonna call the second A and go, hey, you're about to get a call from Brad Korn. Yeah, uh uh-huh, don't take his call. It's not happening. And I think that what Steve came up with is a good way to break up your database. What I personally found is the only way to clean up my database, like, clean it up. And the goal was to have an address for every single person in the database, an address. Guys, we sell real estate, real estate. It's an address. So yes, we create relationships with people, but we sell real estate. Why is it 98% of our database an address, right? Because we can't drop a handwritten note in the mail, which is the magical piece to reconnect with people so that they will actually allow us to continue the relationship for the next five, six, seven connections. Because you don't create a connect, you don't create a relationship in one call using the script. Hey, it's Brad Korn. I know I sold your house three years ago. How's the house? Great. Do you think about buying or selling? No. Do you know anybody who is? That's not creating a relationship. That is looking for the next deal. That's not really a connection, right? So the connection is the Ford, F-O-R-D, write that down. F-O-R-D is family, occupation, recreation. And then we say dreams or whatever. And I always downplay that because nobody gets to the dreams anyway. Um, But it is about what 
is what is your biggest challenge that I can help you with? And you start becoming a connector. Like, are they expanding their deck? Do they need some work done around the house? Um, whatever it might be, you've got other connections in the community to become a connector, which strengthens your relationship with every single person you're referring. That's what we're trying to build our business on is referrals, because that is the two part. On the 12 to two conversion rate, one is they do business with you, two is they refer you, and that's how you get such a bigger return. So to answer your question directly, the only way I knew, knew how to clean up my database was to go from A to Z, start at the A's, pick up the phone and call the first person that shows up. If I don't have their phone number, then I'm going to go into my cell phone. I'm going to go to fastpeoplesearch.com. I'm going to go to Google. I'm going to say it again, fastpeoplesearch.com. I'm going to go to Google. I'm going to go to Facebook. And I'm going to look in their about. Some people actually have their phone numbers in their about. They have their address in their about. Sometimes their address is only the work address. If that is truly all you can find, that's an address to reach that person and continue the relationship. And then you have your MLS tax records uh, that you can find anybody if they own their house, right? So fast people search will, will pull up every address they've ever had. Tax records will tell you if they own their home. And you can also look like whatever address you find for them on fastpeoplesearch.com, go right back to the tax record, pull up that address and see if they're still listed as the owners. And then you can even pull up the history tab to see if that something happened or transitioned. This isn't a fun exercise because you're gonna find out how many people have moved that are actually in your database that are the hundred sales that I'm telling you about right now that you're missing every day and every year. And it's all with people that you already know, like, and trust you. So go from A to Z, clean up every contact, make your database 100% information like loaded, right? Phone number and address are the two most critical things in Brad Corn's world. And I know I did not say email. I did not say email. Emails are not going to create a relationship with somebody, right? Now, you're not going to in seven emails get me to be your best friend. I'm probably not even going to look past the second email or the first email if I wasn't expecting it. Emails are perfect and text messages are perfect for clients you are working with or that you're sending properties to or that is going to sell. So that text messages and emails are only great communication devices for the people you're working with or that have actually made it through that first filter. As I said in the previous class, 98% to 99% of everyone you talk to every day is not moving right now. So when we say that the average person moves every 10 years, right? That means 10% of the people you talk to are moving this year. So if you call 10 people today, one of them are moving this year and there's 12 months in the year. So you might, if you only call 10 people, you got zero appointments for 11 months out of the 12 months, zero appointments. If you call 100 people, 10 of them are moving. So you still might find one person per 100 the day you're calling that might be thinking of moving, although they might be thinking of moving sometime that month and today's not the day. So you still might end up with a zero. So you got to call them those 100 people all the time to make sure you capture 10 in the next 12 months. You have to call them all the time for the next 12 months to capture 10 sales. So you got to get that database cleaned up and it allows you to reconnect with them by phone, write a handwritten note. And until you get to Z, your database is not clean. If you start bouncing around or you put people on a spreadsheet and you got this list and that list and it's kind of all over the place, you'll never, ever get that database organized. It will always be a hodgepodge because if they're not on a campaign or an action plan that reminds me to call them and stay in touch, then really they're just a, a name and address buried in a needle pin, needle stack, a haystack. They're the needle in the haystack with 14,000 other names. I'm never going to find them. Does that help? Is that, is that helpful for everybody who even just tuned in?
right? So hopefully, is that a yes? We good? Makes perfect sense. Okay, great. So today, anybody else? Yeah, go ahead. All right. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna continue on. So today we're talking about defining your value. And in this session, we're gonna talk about defining value, the three aspects of your service. And I wanna it, it, I want to emphasize your guys, this value proposition thing is about you. What makes you so awesome? What makes you incredible? What makes them do business with you? So this is very one-on-one. -on -one. And there is going to be some exercises that you are really, truly going to work on. I'm going to give you some examples to help you over that hump to break your, you know, imagination free so you can think and really see what we're talking about when we're doing this stuff. Because a lot of people get stuck on this, this exercise of really, truly determining their value, right? And then we're going to talk about know, your, know and state your value. How, how do you say that? And then deliver the value. All right. So uh, there will be some uh, homework for you guys after this to really sit down and I'm going to break it down so easy. You guys are really going to understand how to determine your value and you're going to determine a value proposition that is so powerful that people will choose you, even if you're not the cheapest agent without discounting your commission, whatever it might be. It's going to be that one thing that the way I could say it is, what is it that you do that your competitors absolutely cannot say they can do? What is it, the, the, write this down. What is it that you do or what is it that I do that my competitors absolutely cannot say they do? Now that's a pretty loaded statement and right off the cuff, especially if you're new in real estate, you're like, I don't even know what I do. I haven't even had my sale yet, or I've only had a couple of sales or whatever. There's something from your past that makes you who you are and why the people that know you, like you, and trust you know you, like you, and trust you, right? There's a reason why. It doesn't have to be something real estate related. Almost all of our competitors can say anything they want to say oh yeah we do that too and you gotta you want to come up with a value proposition that they are like have no idea what this person is talking about right i'll give you one quick example one of my standard opening conversations with a seller at a listing presentation is this mr and mrs seller see the thing is what people don't realize is that the mls the multiple list service that the realtors use do not sell properties. They don't sell properties because in the reason why I said that is because my competitors are saying, we're going to get you in the MLS. We're going to get you in the MLS. We're going to get you in the MLS. That's the best place you can be. I'm sitting down saying MLS does not sell properties. It doesn't. And the reason why I came up with that one is because I got to beat my competition out. Guys, we are in a market that is scarce. Okay. I need you to have a, I don't need you to, you want to have a change in your mindset that the way you're going to win in this market, I'm going to be a, a, about as harsh as I can get. You need to steal the listings away from your competitors. You need to absolutely steal. Oh, and I'm not even sharing my screen yet, am I? We haven't missed anything yet. So you're good there on graphics or anything. But uh, you guys always yell at me if I forget to do that. <laughs> if you're like, wait, what's he talking about? You have to take, I mean, this is, you got to steal it away. And so right now, this is why I was so excited about this value proposition class session, because we have to create the value proposition that doesn't even give them another opportunity. All right. Make sure I share the story about multiple offers. Or actually, I'll just share it now. I don't really have it in the material. But so the first thing, I want to go back to the listing, is I say MLS doesn't sell properties. It, it's a myth that people think MLS sells properties. It doesn't. Do you guys know why I would say that? I'm, I'm, does anybody, could anybody even guess how I'm going to back that up or what I would say after that? What would you guess? Or are you guys like, I have no idea why he would say that, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? The MLS doesn't sell properties. People sell properties. 
Exactly. People sell properties. And when I explain that in a way that the seller can uh, understand it, I say this. See, there are 10,000 properties on the market right now. And when somebody, when an agent, a typical average agent lists your property and throws you an MLS, they're just chucking you into a pile of eight to 10,000 properties or whatever. Do you know what's on the market? It can be a thousand, right? They just chuck you into a pile of thousand properties and they all look exactly the same. See, the marketing actually helps us get the agent to pull your property up by your address, single out your property and set up the showing. And I have several ways that I do that in my value proposition or in the service that I deliver. So what I had to do was dumb down the MLS because everybody, that, that creates us too equal. So I dumb that down. And I also say, and, most of the stuff in MLS doesn't even have stuff filled in completely. I mean, there's blanks, like they don't have some of the schools in there. They don't have descriptions. They don't have room sizes. Maybe they, maybe they have a picture. Some of them don't even have pictures, right? However, what I do is there's 99 slots available in MLS. And what I know from experience is that when I would fill in 40 pictures, really nice photos, or maybe 12 or 15 or 20 photos like a professional photographer might take, right? And they give me 20 photos and I fill in those 20 photos that I found that if I put in 99 photos, this property that has the professional photos might match a buyer's search criteria 99%. So they did a search, it was a 99% match. Brad Korn's clients' listings have 99 photos filled in versus 10, 12, or 20. And so the computer loves to see that more stat, more data, video links, everything filled in. So we were a 98% match, but we actually show up first on like realtor.com, Zillow, Trulia. Okay, guys, that was very specifically crafted. There's stuff in there that I was talking about, Realtor.com, Zillow, Trulia. I still pull those down. Those are not valuable. You're getting properties when they're sold if you're on Zillow and Trulia. And I'm going to share another script with you that brings that value proposition back. Is this helping when I give you like some personal examples? Does it open up your mind to something you might not have thought of before? Yeah, totally. Absolutely. Great. So a little bit different in, in the coaching style. I mean, coach... Coaching is used too universally. Some coaches, how does that make you feel? What would you do different? How would you handle that? How would you say it? Too many people say they're a coach and they're just training and teaching you their model. But what we're doing is I try to bring both worlds together because I know when I'm coaching and I don't know what to do differently or I would have done it, I just need a little boost or an idea. And then my mind just takes off and I start thinking of stuff. So that's why I teach the way I do. So how, what are you going to do to beat out your competition and steal these buyers and sellers away from your competition? You, I'm sorry, guys, you got to steal. You're going to become a thief right now. From this day forward, you are going to apply the Ignite models and you are going to blow up your market. I look at your guys' market center. I mean, just how many people are on this call? We probably got, what, 30 people on the call. If you all did 100 sales each this year, that's 30 times 100. That's 3,000 sales. Start looking at the sales in the MLS, and you're going to find real quick that you almost will dominate your entire market if you guys had 3,000 sales. You got 1,500 agents in your office. If everybody does 100 sales, that's 15, what is that? 15,000 15, with a couple zeros. That's 150 sales a year. You know, I heard Gary Keller say once, and it totally applies to this value proposition, that when you figure out your value proposition and you bring that value and you tap into your database and the relationships and you start getting to 100, when Gary Keller started Keller Williams, I think he truly envisioned zero competition, like completely putting other companies completely out of business. The thing is, is that we all got trapped in the same thing that everybody else is trapped in, looking for the next deal, looking for the next deal, buying leads, doing all this stuff, and just ignoring the people that are already moving that already know us, like us, and trust us. Guys, the database, when you go from A to Z, is going to be scary because of how much you probably missed. 
The good news is they're going to move again in 10 years. And if you grab the relationship anywhere along the way, that you're going to have them on the next sale and every sale after that. So in that value proposition, if you guys had 150,000 sales a year in your marketplace, there is no competition. And it, it, the 100 deals are in front of all of us. So you guys already know it's there. So today we're talking about the three, this section, we're talking about the three aspects. So a client's experience is really what you want your value proposition to revolve around. I've said this in a past session that what's in my value proposition benefits the client, not me, right? I, I talked about only showing three houses and selling a house. I don't go out and show people 10 properties in one day, or if they relocate to the area, multiple properties all weekend long. I have them drive around the first day, learn the area, drive past every property they thought they wanted to see. And every single time, I'm talking thousands of times, not just a couple, thousands of times, they will eliminate over half of what's on their list just by driving by. So then I'm already going to only show the properties that they want to see now versus us pulling in the driveway. And they're like, oh, yeah, this one's really bad. How many of you have had that happen? Or you pull up and you're like, oh, yeah, we don't like this area. Can we just go on? Well, you already set up the showing, right? And the, the, the listing agent's going to expect feedback. I mean, they're just waiting for you to show the property so they can tell their seller something to get the property sold, which again, now I wanna add another layer. What's your value proposition to the co-op agents in your marketplace? I'm gonna talk about that a little bit too, because I have a value proposition of why every co-op agent wants to work with Brad Corn in the Kansas City market. And I've worked hard for that reputation and what I do and how I treat co-op agents so that they love working with me. Who benefits from that? And by the way, that's in part of my script and my value proposition. I say, Agents love working with Brad Corn. You cannot interview for reputation, right? So can you guys say that? You cannot interview an agent for reputation. And if you're talking to any other top agent along with me, I guarantee you most top agents are so mean and nasty to agents. You could, I mean, you don't have to share a specific story and I wouldn't, but I would just say they are so mean and nasty to agents. There are agents that actually do not show some agents properties just because they know they're that hard to work with or they're, they're just ruthless or it's never a win-win, right? We talk about, we'll talk about Keller Williams with Y4C2Ts. Is this good stuff so far? Are you guys like expanding your vision of this. So what I would ask you here is, what is your Disney experience? You know, when we're looking at the purpose, the purpose of real estate, um, what is your Disney experience? Because it's all about the experience for the client that they're going to have. They only move once every 10 years, according to everyone that's attending here, and you guys saying your market turns over about every 10 years. So they only move once every 10 years. I mean, you need to make it a Disney-like experience. So what is your underlying purpose of real estate? So when we look at the experience for the agents or, or for the clients, the customers, for buyers, it's finding them the right home, getting them the best price in the right amount of time, the time frame that they want to move. And this is for both of them, the least amount of problems, right? The least amount of problems. We're going to talk about your team to help you eliminate problems as they come up. And what I would challenge you as a coach is every time you have a bump in the road, have your, your, your it's like that objections notebook, write down what went wrong so that you can go back after the transaction, after you finish saving the deal and you're consumed for a day, two days, a week, trying to save this deal, right? That you can eliminate that or plug the hole. So over the years, I just kept plugging holes, plugging holes, plugging holes, plugging holes, plugging holes until it just got better and better and smoother and smoother. And it was more predictable. And that, that level of service that we brought, that Disney level experience is really a great experience. So one of the things I get to say as my value proposition is, the last thing I say is, and we're going to have fun doing this, right? 
buying a house or selling a house is so stressful, guys that we're taking the stress out and adding the fun back in. You should have fun selling your house. Now you need to know what's behind that, that you're doing to provide that. Anybody wanna throw in some comments, any like major like things that are, are just yelling out at you right now that you feel the, the urge to share? Okay. All right, so let's look at this. For sellers, it's about netting the most money right? In the shortest amount of time and the least amount of problems. Like I said, everybody's on the least amount of problems. So when you're looking at what is this underlying purpose of real estate, what is the least amount of problems mean? So least amount of problems, I'll give you one example. It, actually, let me ask, is there anybody that has figured out a high level value proposition on how you avoid the least amount of problems. Does anybody have anything in the room that they could share there? Just something that you do. Okay, so I'm gonna give you one. And then if you chime in, just kind of yell out, unmute yourself and yell in there and interrupt when I'm done. Mine is my instant on listing. Let me tell you what an instant on listing is. Have you ever heard of this before? Probably not because I made it up and it's in my listing presentation. And my com my competitors absolutely cannot back this up. Absolutely cannot back this up. It's instant on means that when I sit down and meet with a seller, if I'm doing a listing presentation or consultation, whatever you want to call it, right? And I use the right scripts to get them to decide to list with me today. I already have everything. The sign, the lockbox, the camera, everything, my tape measure, the listing packet, the MLS sheet, everything's right there with me. I go to the listing appointment to get the listing that day, right? Even though I know that they may have said, we're just really starting the process, I still take everything with me because by the time we eliminate this, and if they are market ready, we're signing the listing agreement that day. And if they say they need to think about it or get the house ready, I already have a script for that to get them to list. And I shared that with you in a previous class. So if you wanna go back through, it's the one where you say, between now and when you put the sign in the yard, there are buyers out there that may have overpaid for your property, paid your price, got your terms, everything. But if it takes us a week or two to get you on the market, those buyers that would have fell in love with your property are settling for second best. See, very scripted settling for second best when theirs is the best house. They're gonna settle for second best because that's all they know is available and they're gonna buy that one. We don't get these buyers back. All we have is the people from the day the sign goes in your yard to that day forward. So we may miss some really good opportunities and we'll just have the leftovers later. Guys, boom, go back and watch this video and write that down. That script will get them to live. If they are selling anytime in the next week or two, we're signing the listing right then. They'll do their final little cleanup and get it staged overnight. Pictures the next morning. Well, actually, I take pictures while I'm there if it's staged or halfway staged. I have my camera, my sign, my lockbox. So I can spend an hour on the presentation, an hour taking pictures, getting all the paperwork signed, measuring all the rooms. I'm never going to touch the listing again. And they go live on MLS within an hour of me leaving the property and they are already getting showings that afternoon if it's in the morning or the very first thing the next day. So that level of service just shows, it just blows them out of the water and none of my competitors can say they do everything on one in one hour. Now, the reason why I did that is because it's like you forget to put this, I, I've done it I, already. I list a property, I wasn't really prepared. So yeah, I put the lockbox on, but it's like, okay, we're gonna have our signed runner, go put the sign up. You know, and then you get a call from your seller three days later. It's like, we don't even have a sign in our yard. Another simple thing was, uh, I don't know if I have a property brochure laying around here. Uh, we have property brochures that we put in. It's got the slide binder with the plastic cover. It's a nice flyer in the front, but then it's got utilities, favorite things about our home, uh, things we love about the neighborhood, updates and upgrades that we've done, uh, Google map, the MLS sheet, all that stuff's in this packet that the buyers can pick up and take home. And we literally put the slide bar cover thing on it. Cheap, cheap report cover, right? But it's the nicest thing that you'll see in any listing that you go to. 
How many, when was the last time you guys showed a house? There's nothing sitting in the counter for them to pick up and take home, right? Maybe there's a binder on the, on the counter, a really nice binder. So this is, this is my value proposition is, you know, other top agents might do like a really nice binder, a big book that they leave on the counter. Guys, ours get picked up and taken home with them and they don't get folded up and thrown in the back seat of the car. They sit in their kitchen for a couple of days. You get extra shelf life and exposure over all the other houses they saw that day, at least until their kids have a report due at school and then they take the cover off and then they throw you away, right? So I say that to make them laugh and to engage, you know, get some engagement. But now I just showed the value of my cheap little book just became the nicest thing. Let me pause for a second. Anybody have anything they want to add or ask questions about? Am I expanding your thinking? Yes, I'm going to say, stuff. yeah, good go stuff, ahead. Brad. Good stuff. Good material. Thanks. All right. Great. So the instant on listing, we do everything at once. We eliminate problems. We eliminate forgetting things. We eliminate a lot of stuff. The other thing that this does is it creates consistency so that when you are referred, we talked about this in a previous class. When you are referred and that referral told them all these great things that you did, if it's in your system and you weren't just winging it, then you can provide the same thing. We talked about the cup of chocolates with a balloon at their work when they get their contract accepted. You know, if you just heard about it at a conference and you did it on one, but you were super busy the next month from doing all these cool things you learned, and then you get referred by that person, and you don't send a cup of chocolates with the balloon to the other person, and that was what they loved about hearing about you being referred, then they think that like you don't like them as much as the other one, right? One other thing I do to eliminate problems. Um, actually, I don't know. Oh, there's my phone. I've got my voicemail. Now, I'm just explaining this so you guys can really think about... Um, I wonder if this will play on. No, I got to do it on something else. Here we go. Let me do this. I do this to eliminate trouble calls. Listen to my voicemail as it comes up. It's going to ring through here real quick. I hope. Here we go. Now, I hope you guys can hear it. I do this to eliminate problems with sellers that are calling me freaking out. I've eliminated those freak out calls by this one thing that I changed. Hey, you reached up on a Brad Corn. Today is Wednesday. Please leave your name, number, and a brief message for your call. I will be checking returning calls throughout the day. If you do need assistance, you can call our office directly, 816-224-CORN, 816-224-5676. Now listen to this last part. If you get a voicemail there, be sure you leave a message that will allow us to get back to you more quickly. Hope you're having a great day. Did everybody hear it okay? Okay, so today is Wednesday. That one thing means that anybody that calls me today knows I'm alive and I'm working. Leave a message at the tone. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Oh my God, we, we, the blah, blah, somebody left my door unlocked, blah, 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 left my door open. This is uh, whatever it might be. Leave a message. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Well, as soon as you can to that person is in the next five seconds because their house was left unlocked and it looked like somebody came in their house, right? So that Wednesday, all of a sudden, just like, okay, he's in, he's going to hear the message. Guys, you check voicemail every single day. So it took a while to get into the habit of just changing my voicemail every single day. And if you call me and it says today's Wednesday and it's tomorrow, then you know, oh, Brad hasn't changed his voicemail yet. Oh, and then you just automatically know, well, maybe he's not in the office yet. So, hey, Brad, give me a call when you get into the office. Oh, by the way, your voicemail says Wednesday. I don't even care if I get it changed or not. It already sets the tone that they know they're checking in, okay? A um, lot of information to cover here, though. I'm hoping you guys just pick up a couple ideas to really take it back and look at what is your value proposition. So there is so much stuff in this class today. So your value proposition distills uh, the exact, the succinct benefits of working with you. 
And when you're leveraging your team and building a team, if you build a team or when you should build a team so that you can have leverage, most people want to control everything because there's something about you that you believe that's why they're doing business with you. Guys, if you will sit down, read this, read through your material again, go through the exercise, really start writing it out. What is it that makes you, you? And it could be something as simple as, you know, I think the thing that people like working with me is if they call me and leave a message, even if I don't have the answer, I always call them back to let them know I'm working on it, right? Um, I had saw one agent, it was a guaranteed 10 minute call back or whatever. Well, that was a value proposition because nobody calls anybody back in the real estate industry. Guys, call your call three listings off of the normal advertising out there by normal agents and see how many of them call you back. Just inquire, right? I mean, a friend was just telling me at dinner last night, he's like, he called on a for sale by owner down the street from his property because he wanted to see what he was asking for it. And the guy just said, it's on Zillow. Go check it out there. And then hung up. And it's like, what? That was a for sale by owner talking to a potential buyer. He had no idea he was a neighbor. So anyway, what is your, what makes you awesome? And that's what I want you guys to get out of today's class, right? What is it that er helps you earn your commission? What is it that, how do you share the complexity of what you do? right? So when a transaction goes south, are you a problem solver? You know, are you just a guy that goes into frantic mode and freak out mode and start finding who's to blame? Or are you a, a problem solver that can look through different solutions to get to the end result? And I do talk about that as my value proposition is we've sold over 2,500 homes. That means we've done this about 2,400 more times than most agents in their entire career. So we know how to negotiate contracts. We know how to get an agent to come up $3,000 or $5,000 on their price. In your case, you could say to come up ten dollars or $20,000 in your price. See, when you start negotiating hundreds of transactions and you keep getting a little bit higher price, your value proposition is most people on the market sell for 96% of list price. This is my personal one. We average 98.8% of our seller's list price. That's average. It's not counting this crazy market where things are going over, um, but that's the average. So the market average, the average agent that, that I'm basically saying eight out of 10 agents that you could interview are getting 96% of their seller's list price. We know how to negotiate and bump that up an extra two to 3%. By the way, my commission is a little higher than any number you've ever heard in any market. I pay out a half a percent higher than anybody else in my marketplace, or not anybody, Midwest, there's a few people that still do it. But I pay a half a percent higher than everybody else in the marketplace, which is again, my value proposition of why agents love working with Brad Korn, they make more money, right? And I'll tell a seller that, Let's just say, for example, this, is, this isn't costing you 1% more than the other guy you could talk to. We're actually netting you 2.8% higher sale price. So in actuality, that extra 1%, half of it goes away to somebody else, right? But out of that other half, you're actually gaining 1.8%. You're gaining almost a 2% advantage having us work for you. That's a value proposition. And I can back it up with stats. I just pulled up my MLS for the history that I've been in. And I can say on 900 listings sold, my average list to sale price ratio is 98.8%. That's through the crash. That's through short sales. That's through HUD homes where everything comes in lower. We sell enough of them higher, but that's our average. So what makes you awesome? Good stuff so far, guys? Yes. Funk Functionary, is that, do we have any questions? Yes. Um, so, I mean, if people are that having cell phones, yes, and they don't have a history of, uh, of that, so how you bring that value proposition of, uh, of, being, of bringing more to the sellers if uh, you didn't actually sell anything or you don't have any, I mean, any stats to pull up from the MLS because you, you didn't have any sale. 
Yeah. So, um, Chuck, check with your office. I think what you asked was if I don't have those stats yet and I'm new in real estate, what do I use? Is that correct? Yes. 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 So there's a couple of ways you're going to use your office stats. So here's what a new agent would say. This is your value proposition. OK, this is if you listen, you guys are going up against Brad Corn in Kansas City selling 100 homes a year which by the way, I'm nothing special or anything. I just have a great value proposition, right? But you're going up against Brad Corn and you're brand new in real estate and you knew who I was. And you're like, oh my gosh, I'm going up. Here's all you'd have to say is, listen, here's the thing with me is that you're not hiring one agent. In fact, you're not even hiring a team of two or three or five people. You are hiring 1,500 agents working on your team, working to get your property sold. These are the people I work with every single day. And I have the backing of thousands of sales a year. That's using your office stats and it's using your agents. How many of you love that little thing, right? So you're hiring a team of a thousand agents that are already going to be looking for buyers for your property. They're going to know about it as soon as it hits. And see, here's my other value proposition. See, where most agents might, like right now, we've got some people that are swaying towards, um, uh, office only exposure and things like that. So this is just Brad Korn's value proposition. Whatever is your reason for doing that, that's great. Just have a value of how it benefits your client. So I say, while some agents and offices hold on to a listing and trying to find a buyer, see, I already learned, we don't even sell our own listings. It's happened once in 2,500 sales for Brad Korn. Now, I have sold hundreds of properties where they called on my listing. It wasn't the one they were looking for. And I sold them one of my other listings. But the fact that Brad Corn will actually sell your listing and bring more buyers than anybody else, it's just not going to happen. If anybody would have figured out how to do it, I would have. So I'm already downplaying that next agent that comes in and goes, yeah, I mean, I have a whole pool of buyers that I'm going to take it to right away. Just took them out of the equation. I say, so I follow that up and I say, what I do is I have 8,000 agents ready to see your house and find the however many are out there that have the buyer for your house. I'm going to expose it to everybody at once with the instant on listing so that I make sure I sell your money for the most. So you sell your house for the most money. That was one of the items. And the second item, the fastest, as fast as possible. So rather than a traditional marketing where we might do an open house this weekend, we might run an ad somewhere this weekend, we might do it on this site, we'll pay for a banner ad on this site, but not on the 350 sites that we go to, right? We're just on this site. We're going to do mass exposure, 350 websites all at once to everyone. And you know what? If I've got a buyer and they want to buy your house, but somebody else in the marketplace has a buyer who's willing to pay more. You hired me to get you the most money, not to get Brad Corn the most money. And there's too many agents out there that would try and get that double commission or they'll even reduce it a little bit, whatever, when you might've had a buyer out there in the marketplace that would have paid more. Is that helpful? Kind of give you a little bit of angle. There's so many things that can be your value proposition. It doesn't have to be that one thing. And as you build that, you can bring it in. Am I giving you guys some good ideas? Absolutely. So the third and final aspect is the, the fiduciary. And fiduciary is the difference between functionary is you complete a task. Fiduciary completes the task and goes beyond their client's best, beyond their client's interest, right? So here's Brad Korn's value proposition. And I will always work this into the conversation. I've said it so many times. It just, all these show up in just about every single meeting. Here's what I say. Here I say, listen, I'm treating this as if it were my own house, my own listing. So like right now, when I push a price, like we don't know how much things are going to sell for. You can't look at solds right now. Pendings are more important to determine what listing price to go at than solds. And yet those aren't even accurate if they're all selling for over asking price, right? So the solds we're looking at right now when we're doing a market analysis is six months old data or last month's data. It's not this month. 
So you got to take into consideration the actives and the sold. So I look at actives. Actives actually determine what price I'm going to list the property at. I'll determine from sales, not so much now, but pendings, what the range is and for their house or their type of property, here's kind of the range that it's selling in. So if I go up to actives and in that range, we are the cheapest thing on the list because everybody's overpriced, then we can push the price up. We can either push it up to the lowest one and probably get more than what we should get, or we can even go one or two above if those look like crud. So my value proposition is I say, I'm not gonna overprice your property, but I will tell you that after 2,500 sales, the experience that I have 30 years, I never know what a property is going to sell for. What I mean by that is a third will sell for what I thought they would sell for. A third will sell for at what I thought they would sell for. And a third will sell for less than I thought they would sell for. So I'm the first top most successful agent. All these little words are just boom, boom. They're just anchoring that they're, they've got the right agent, right? But as even as a successful agent, I will be the first one to tell you the truth. I don't know what it's going to sell for. So what I do is I'm going to price, I'm going to suggest you price it where I would do it if it were my property, because I'm going to try and get the extra five or $10,000. If the market bears it, great. Now, I will also tell you, because I just had a guy say, well, whatever price you really, really think, because what will get me upset, he actually told me this, this was just yesterday, he said, what will get me upset is if you come back and ask me to drop the price. So I had to go back into and re-explain, I'm, gonna, I'm suggesting the price that I would suggest if it were me listing my property. Now, what Brad Korn does is if he doesn't sell it the first day, he drops it $5,000 tomorrow. If he gets 10 showings and no offers the second day, he drops it $5,000 on day three. So I will suggest price drops if we're going to do it that way. Now, if you want me to give you a solid number that you won't have to drop the price, then I'm going to suggest, now this was just a townhouse, but even in my market that we're going to go on at 150. One literally just sold yesterday for 144.9. 150 is pushing it. I thought we could push it to 160 till that one came through, right? So if you want me to give you that price, so because I don't want you upset, when I ask you to drop the price, then we really need to price it about 135 or 140 because that one just sold for 144.9. No, 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 I'll, I'll trust what you do. But so now I took out the objection that he's gonna be mad when I ask him to drop the price really fast. So we're going on at 150, it'll probably sell for 150 or 144.9. I can't imagine that it won't. So hopefully these are all kind of helping you. All right, so. On the know your state of value, guys, you have to know what your state of value, page five, write down page five or open up to your page five in your book. This is where you're going to write down you, what you do, right? What do you do that your competitors cannot say? And it could be just something from, I listen. I know how to listen better than other people. Um, I I, I can explain things more basically because you're new in real estate and you're trying to understand it. So when you're understanding things, you break it back down to the simple you can understand, right? My daughter's in the mortgage industry uh, as an assistant, and she's like, half the stuff they talk about, I don't even know what they're saying, right? So you just got to understand it at the simple level. So I'm easily able to explain. If you speak a language, you know, if you're bilingual, then you can explain this in a way you can understand it because I can, I, I'm, I'm very fluent and I can explain the terminology. All right, so quickly, the, what do your buyers want? This just goes through the stuff. What do buyers want? Find the right house, uh, help them negotiate the best terms, help with price negotiations. Think about what you do for a buyer and what they want. What they want is to know about the best properties before they sell. So. I put them on an automated MLS search so they get the property before anybody else in the market knows it's for sale. You know, quit using Zillow and Truly and all those big sites. You're, I'm going to put you directly in the system that the realtors use. In fact, you're going to know about the best listings of newest properties before most of the realtors do because they're not watching the computer every minute of the day like you will be for this property. Guys, go back, watch this video again. That's a very, that's a good value proposition script, right? All right, so what do buyers value though? 
the reputation of the agent, the agents being honest and trustworthy, that stuff. It's all in your book. You guys read through the material, but I want to give you the way to apply the material, not just read the material to you. So review your list. What is it that you do? So my notes here are, oh, so one of my value propositions on agent's reputation. I tell this to sellers a lot in the listing presentation. I say, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, here's the one thing. You really can't, well, actually, I'll, I'm gonna share that script because it's a, coming up on the next slide, the sellers. But for agents, agents be honest and trustworthy. I say, agents use me to, to find homes because I know how to find properties the second they go live and I make sure my clients know they are, right? What do sellers want? Kind of the same thing as before. Um, they want their, well, they actually want the uh, market home to potential buyer. So I, I put it on MLS within an hour so that every single buyer in the marketplace, even the people that would buy a for sale by owner have an agent sending them properties from MLS. So when you sell for sale by owner, the value of using me is you get that buyer plus three others. Man, how many of you just heard that script, right? For for sale by owners, you get all four buyers in the marketplace, but only one of them's really willing to do this on their own. And the other three are totally just looking at frantically whatever their agent sends them. So if you really, really want to go for sale by owner, you need to market your property with a co-op commission of say, say like 4%, right? You'd be saving a percent or two, but you market to the agents and you tell every one of them, you're paying them 4% to bring their buyers over here. And then you could sell your house yourself. They don't know how to get a hold of every single agent. So they're always going to miss buyers. That's a value proposition, right? So what do sellers value? Comes right back to that reputation. So I say this in a listing appointment. I say what you cannot interview anyone for that you're talking to. If you're interviewing other, I say, I always say, if you were to interview other agents, you can't interview for reputation. You see, and the next thing down here, uh, agent is honest and trustworthy. Agent is friend or family member. So what I say here is I say, most agents love, just about everybody I know loves working with me. First of all, I have, I have a value proposition or I pay a higher commission. I have a way that I get the agents to pull your property out of a stack of a thousand homes or a hundred homes or 50 homes and put you on the top because I pay them better, right? Second thing is I share all my marketing with them. Even my competitors, I give them my marketing. Now they don't do anything with it, but because Brad shares it, they like me and they trust me. So what that has done is the agents call me when they have to sell their own house. They might even be at another company and they call Brad Corn. Now I've done that probably about three or four times in my career going through a divorce. You know, they can't decide on, they're definitely not letting the, the, the realtor spouse manage it or anybody in their office. So who do they call? When there's a divorce situation and they can't agree, they call Brad Corn because I'm a neutral spot. Their spouse knows who I am. They've seen me in the marketplace. The agent knows I'm trustworthy. So when you have that value proposition, can you guys already see like I'm eliminating my competition? It, it, I am stealing it away from them, right? Okay. And then uh, as we kind of pull this all together, Figure out who your competitors are. So if you're new in real estate and or you've been in real estate, but somebody keeps like beating you out, what is it that they're doing? So I would compete uh, for Dave Ramsey listings. I was in Dave Ramsey's program a long time ago. It has definitely changed and uh, I'm not, not pursuing trying to get back on it for any reason. But during those days that three agents would get the listing and we would all go. So I get in the Ramsey program. All of a sudden, man, I'm just nailing it. I am taking competition. I'm taking listings away from the guy that Dave Ramsey had up on stage at his realtor conferences, right? Sharing his stuff. I am taking them away. I'm just nailing them, just beating my competition out. So he's smart enough to figure out something's going on and he changes something. And then it sways the other way. And all of a sudden he's getting them and I'm missing out. And I'm like, what the heck? So I go, I just started asking the seller, you know, is there any reason, is there anything you've heard from other agents? Cause I knew he had already been in. Is there anything you've heard from other agents that I haven't covered? And they would say, oh yeah, the other guy we talked about uses this new hot technology called a QR code. And he's getting people to scan and find properties. It's like, 
oh, I'm so glad you brought that up. See, there's hundreds of things I do that I could be here for probably for about three hours telling you everything I do. But let me tell you something about technology. I belong to, and this is just me, I belong to a group of the top techiest realtors. You guys can say, our company doesn't even look at ourselves as a real estate company. It's a technology company. So if anybody's got the cutting edge technology and I didn't cover it, there's so much happening behind the scenes to use technology to the fullest. What I, and this is what I said. What I will tell you is I started using QR codes over six, seven, eight years ago with these top techie realtors that I, I market with or learn from, right? And we all share. And we track the results of QR codes. People do not get out, pull up to a house, get out of their car, walk up to the sign and scan the QR code. It, it just doesn't happen. It sounds really cool, but let me tell you something. My job as your realtor is to get the most exposure to your property. The more exposure I get, the more people I get through the front door. Guys, we are pulling this together. So again, if you can hang just a couple more minutes, I'll be able to pull this in and ask for any questions. So this is your technology. That the command app, allows you to give them the search engine, your value proposition right here for command and searching for properties. Anytime you talk to a buyer, they called off realtor.com, they called off a of Zillow, that you got the lead from wherever it's coming from, go, man, I'm so glad we talked today because I actually have a way to shortcut and get you the newest properties before they even show up on the site that you called me from. I don't even have to know what site they called me from. Say, we have an app on the phone that is tied directly to the listings as soon as they go live. In fact, I will also add our instant notification program where I plug you directly into the MLS system that the realtors use. And you can't access the MLS, but I can push the properties that you're looking for to you the minute they go live. You can set, you guys, hopefully you guys can save that in your search, in your MLS. We can, it's a pretty standard thing that you put in a buyer's search criteria, hit save and email it to them and send it instantly the minute it goes live. Cause then they're just getting hammered with properties and they think you're sending them the properties, right? So that's when I say, you will know about the newest listings before most agents even know about the newest listings. So, and then that's delivering your value. So guys, when, when you look at Keller Williams and we put integrity in there, do the right thing and it's in all things, that what is it that you do to make sure you deliver the service that you're, you're providing or that you're talking about. And as you distinguish what yourself is, you wanna set up that campaign and that action plan and that system to make sure you deliver the same thing all the time and deliver a great experience. I call it the Disney experience. I always say the last thing is, and we're gonna have fun. Buying a house should be, be fun. You only do this once every 10 years. So that's the material. I crammed it in with a couple minutes uh, over here. Any questions? I will definitely hang around for a little bit. If anybody has questions, wants clarity, if you guys want any more clarity, you can hang on the call and listen to the responses because we usually get some good stuff. First of all, let me know, what did you guys think of today's class? On a scale of one to 10, where would you put it? Just shout out a number. 10, good material, thanks. So please go back and share that with Mary Beth or Al, if you can find out how to just send them a message and say, thank you so much for uh, putting this Ignite session together. And guys, this is just one class. I, there's no way for me to help you master everything we just talked about in one session. It wouldn't matter if this was four hours. You can't master it here. So I'm going to suggest again, read the content, come to the class, read the content, review your notes, read the content again, and then put it into action. Like put it on your 411. We talked about that last week. So that's these two things, value proposition and goal setting. I mean, I hope I brought it to you in a way that you're really starting, like just getting you excited about, oh my gosh, this is actually way bigger than I've ever given it credit before. If you've come to goal setting classes, 411 classes, value proposition classes in the past and let them know what you guys, what you think about it or send it to me, cornteamkc at gmail. All right, let me open it up. If anybody has any questions, like I threw a whole bunch of value stuff out that I can tell you as Brad Corn, and I hope it got you thinking a little bit about yourself and how you might be able to use some of that, or you found something in you that you could say by me sharing that.
This is open, open mic at the moment. It's great seeing you all here, by the way. All right. And if you guys don't have anything, you can always email me, call me. My, my cell phone is 816-215-3214. My cell phone. <laughs> call me. All right. Great, guys. Thank you. And I appreciate I'm just thanking you in advance for sending out a message, sharing this on any of your company websites. Like if we got the whole office, all your offices on this call, you guys, that will leverage everything you're doing. You guys are not going to bump into each other. All of us have 100 sales sitting right in front of us without even taking business away from somebody else, right? So if you get your office in, the more Keller Williams signs, the more marketing they see, the more everything, it just goes in your favor. So if you guys are really having an impactful experience, share that on all your company stuff. Oh my gosh, this Ignite is whatever it is, you know, whatever it is for you. And if you don't like it and you're not really getting it, then you call me directly and let's figure out why. Thank you, Al, for investing in yourself. And I'll hang out till pretty much everybody jumps off if somebody wants to ask something. Anybody want to share any ahas while we're logging out? Brad, do you, do you share your script books? Um, I actually don't have a script book. I should write a book with my scripts in it. And I will. Um, writing books is not easy for me. I'm not an author. <laughs> Although mm -hmm. I've written uh, E-Myth Real Estate Agent with Michael Gerber, it took me two years to really deliver the product that was really what I, I wanted it to be if I was going to write a book. I can write all the fast books and all that stuff, but I'm just not into the marketing piece to sell something. I really wanted to help people. So a lot of the scripts, the best way to do it is to one, write down all the objections that you get from every appointment from now for probably the next two, three years. I probably did this for five years. Every time I talk to a buyer, if I'm on the phone converting a lead, if I'm at a listing appointment, if I don't, if they give me that final thing that I say, okay, well then just give me a call when you guys are ready. If that just happened, what'd they say right before that? And I write that down. And then I start seeking out those scripts. And that's when I can tell you specifically, here's a great script for that. Or you can get this old script books and go through. Like that's your research time. That's working on your business for an hour, three days a week. Go write down three scripts that you could have used when that objection came up. So you're going to accumulate this list over, say, the next three years. You're going to have three scripts for every objection. And by writing them down in your little notebook, the most important scripts will show up for you versus trying to memorize all these scripts. But the best way is if you want, if you would go back and watch this session, it's all available on the drive. And I think it's on your YouTube channel too. If you slow it down, just let the script play, pause, rewind, write it, play it again until you get it all written down. Create that script book on the ones that ring true to you. And then, yeah, if you want to share them back to me, that would be awesome because I don't really, I mean, I have them all written down in my head. I probably have them written down on pieces of paper somewhere, but uh, definitely have taken the scripting to a mastery level. That's a good idea. Thank you, Brett. Yep. Anybody showing up for your first session because of my little email I sent out and you're glad you came today? All right, so maybe y'all have been coming. All right, guys, we're gonna go ahead and close it out then. Um, if you have anything else, you can definitely, um, oh yeah, I can stop the share and have my video on. Um, you can definitely reach out to me. You guys know where to find me and we will be here Friday. Remember, half an hour earlier, half an hour earlier. So 10.30 on Fridays. Hope you guys will join us again and tell everyone they need to be here. Thank you.